Behind the mask is a mad rig Letting all fuck ten shots for the hat trick I wrestle because it's just what I've done my entire life. When you win a big match, it feels great. Uh, there's no explanation for it. It's just one of those things where all the effort and all the hard work you put into something, you know, it finally pays off. It's just the best feeling in the world. I know I should have health insurance, but on my budget, I just can't afford it. I need help. I design homes to protect people, but I can't afford health insurance to protect my own family. What can I do? It's time to call ICANN, a name you can trust. If you've had problems affording major medical insurance or have been turned down due to health issues, you do have a choice. ICANN offers you options including association group insurance programs and major medical plans to meet your family's needs and budget because nothing is more important than your health. No matter your income or your pre-existing condition, call ICANN right now. If you could save hundreds of dollars a month or thousands of dollars a year, this is a call you can't afford not to make. Tens of thousands have trusted ICANN with their family's health, and so should you. So don't wait. Call ICANN right now. When you call, ask your ICANN agent about programs that include access to doctors 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, from wherever you are. Don't wait. Call ICANN right now. And welcome back to Old Spice College Lacrosse here in Princeton. We got a good win, 3-2 Princeton over North Carolina after one quarter of play. And Sunday night, ESPNU will deliver a special edition of the experts as host Lowell Galindo and our experts analyzed every first round matchup of the NCAA tournament bracket. The experts tournament edition, part of tournament countdown presented by Delta Airlines on ESPNU Sunday at 9.30 Eastern time. And March Madness getting underway early in the Ivy League. Princeton and Harvard, a playoff game for the Ivy League championship and an automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. That'll be tomorrow at 4 Eastern time on ESPN3. Quite a bit of drama in Ivy League basketball this year. Harvard looking for, you never believe this, their first ever basketball championship in the Ivy League. They've never won the Ivy League. That game's going to be played in neutral territory at Yale tomorrow at 4 Eastern time. So that should be a good one. A lot of buzz here in Princeton. Meanwhile, a flag off the faceoff, and let's get a listen here as the official gives us the call. It looks like they're going to call an interference or a delay of game. I don't know who it's on. It's either on Ficaro. He's trying to pick up the ball, and then there's a, a throwing of a stick and a check-in of a stick. Who knows? I don't know if you're that few, who you get possession. If there's a flag on that, I'm not sure, but it they should definitely the be flag. something. Okay, so I, I think that's the right play. Just give Princeton possession of the ball on the, the procedure for North Carolina. These officials going to the flags uh, early and often here. We had uh, two man up, one minute man up opportunities. Both teams scored on their chances in the first quarter. So that flag picked up and Princeton will get it on the procedure call. Leading this game by a score of 3-2. They had a three nothing lead in the first quarter and then a North Carolina goal followed by a dead ball foul gave Carolina a man up that they capitalized on and that made it 3-2. So North Carolina scoring quickly in the fading minutes of that first quarter twice. Chris McBride. He's got a goal. Short stick on him. Fires a shot, and there's a save by Chris Madelon. Madelon's first save of the game. Unsettled play here. North Carolina bringing it right back through. Chris Hunt brought it across quickly on the clear, and now it comes back behind the net for Billy Bitter. Ed Prevost, number 16, at midfield for Carolina. And Prevost has a goal in back-to-back -back games. Before these last two games, he only had one career goal, so a nice job for him to find uh, his way onto the field and really start against production. A 
here. You see our stats so far, shots on goal, North Carolina an advantage. Saves though, probably the biggest story so far is Tyler Fiorito for Princeton. Five saves in the first quarter of this game. A couple of them were impressive ones at bat. And right here, North Carolina is going to the second midfield. They have Pat Foster, a former attackman, a high school attackman, inverting, but he loses his footing. And I, I, that, that to me is a terrible call from the ref. That is not a penalty. That's just good defense. If the ball's in a stick, you're allowed to try to check it out of it. So a call again going against Princeton. And the flags have been flying here in the early going. That's going to be a hold call. And North Carolina is going to get a man up. And you see Foster slips. And what, what the ball's in his stick. He's hitting his hand. That is not a hold. You're supposed to drive down. And, and again, I don't know. The, the ball's supposed to come out of his stick. But that's what you're supposed to do as a defensive player. So second man up chance of the day here for Princeton. Sorry for North Carolina. They scored on their first. That was a one minute. This will be 30 seconds for the Tar Heels. They quickly work it up top. Thomas Wood gives it up for Billy Bitter. Now a shot from wide and another shot from Thomas Wood on the right side going wide, backed up by North Carolina. 14 seconds left on the man up. It was a nice job from North Carolina running Billy Bitter up and doing the hidden ball trick. And it actually worked. They had the Princeton defensive players looking to the other side of the field. They just had poor execution. Didn't get the shot on cage. Now down low, a shot saved made by Fiorito. Right in front, and Fiorito gets his stick on it, deflects it out of bounds. North Carolina was closest, but there's only one second left on this man up. And you see here, we talked about Fiorito and his ability to play the angles. And right there, he just does a nice job holding that post. And Foster didn't do enough to reach around him and beat him. Foster probably had a chance at the near post, too. There was some room there, but what Foster had to do, he had to step up the field and create more angle for himself. You're not going to beat most Division One goalies from behind the cage or, or at least goal line extended. You want to create angle by stepping up the field. Back to even strength. Tar Heels unable to convert on that man up, and a big hit on his screen behind the net. And the whistle is going to give it back to Princeton. I guess they called a moving pick. It looked like the Princeton defensive player saw the man setting the pick home and saying the pick and ran him over. I, I disagree with that call as well, but uh, what can you do? Yeah, this is a tightly officiated game so far. And not, o not only did Holman get run over, they called the pick on him. You know, trying to get run over at least <laughs> make it an effective pick. Insult the injury there as the ball goes back to Princeton. Tiger team only playing their third game of the year, still trying to figure themselves out a little bit. Last week's win at Johns Hopkins, what do you think that win represented uh, against a Hopkins team that may not be one of their strongest this year, Matt? Yeah, it's, it's Hopkins is a young team, they're still trying to find out who they are, but what it shows is how good this Princeton defense is, and Tyler Fiorito is playing at a high level. They can hold anyone under 10 goals, and, and to hold Johns Hopkins to three, it was a team that put up about 17 on Delaware the last week. So that, you know, that's a Hopkins team that can score, but this is a Princeton defense that can shut down. Anytime you can go into Homewood and come away with a win like that, 12-6, that, that says something. That is not an easy place to go in and get a win. So that was a big step forward for Chris Bates and his Princeton Tigers. Meanwhile, North Carolina, they played a lot more lacrosse at four and one. Wins this year over Navy in a close game. They beat UMBC earlier this week. Their only loss was at Ohio State, Joe Bresci's old team. They dropped a 13-8 decision out in Ohio. Shot going wide here, out of bounds, backed up by North Carolina. And that was just definitely not a, a great effort by, by North Carolina. Again, they came out a little flat, didn't win the ground balls, and just really got outplayed by an Ohio State team. Joe Bresci made a name for himself out of Ohio State, really put that program on the map in lacrosse. Pulled off a first round NCAA tournament upset a few years ago at Cornell. And that was really what started people talking about Joe Bresci and then he came down to Chapel Hill to take over a program that had not really been achieving at its 
traditional level under John Hawes for a few years. And so Joe Bresci now working him back as Billy Bitter turns close range shot and Fiorito again there to make the stop. So Billy Bitter has been trying to find his range, but Fiorito just had him completely blocked off. Now a hit that midfield, we're gonna get a ground ball battle. And it's picked up by Princeton and quickly fed to midfield. And sent into the attacking zone on a long pass from Connor Riley. So some physical play at midfield and Princeton able to take over on the ground ball win. And a very aware play by Chris McBride, picking the ball but realizing he could go over the midfield line because one of their other mates had stepped over so he knew they had enough people on the offensive end. And that's what you look for your seniors is to lead by example but make the cerebral smart type plays like that. So after five goals in the first quarter, the offenses have slowed down a little bit here in the second quarter, still nothing across as we approach the eight minute mark. Here's Schreiber, a shot and a save made by Madelon, rebound loose in the crease and Madelon picks it up. So Chris Madelon, the senior for North Carolina, makes the stop on the freshman, attackman from Princeton. Second save of the game for Madelon, who did not have a lot of work to do in that first quarter. And there you see the goalie comparison. Tyler Fiorito, seven saves to only two for Madelon. Meanwhile, we're on a scoreless streak here in this game that's now over seven minutes long. Both goalies, uh, Matt, I think have a little something to do with that as Fiorito and now Madelon both playing some strong goal. And now a oh, near turnover, but it's picked up by North Carolina. A word pick up there by Marcus Holman. And the Tar Heels will maintain possession. Holman behind the net. Holman's also a former attackman who loves this matchup behind with his short stick on him. And he's literally going to look to draw that defender and get an open shot for his, for his teammate. And he does as Holman gets the ball off and a goal ties this game at three. Nikki Galasso, the freshman. And you see here, it all starts with Holman getting that step and now Princeton's got a slap. And this is when Holman does a nice job getting his hands free and he finds Galasso to his left hand, his strong hand, who does a nice job setting his feet and finding the upper portion of the cage. 11th goal of the year for Nikki Galasso, the freshman leading this North Carolina team in scoring. Only his sixth career game. And Nikki Galasso already has 11 goals as a freshman. Very impressive start as we watch these two super freshmen, Tom Schreiber and Nikki Galasso, go at it. Galasso, the first to score. Thomas Wood for the Tar Heels. Worked his way down that right wing and then stopped on a dime and sent it back out. Now Wood, a junior attackman from Dallas, Texas. Finding some space behind the net. Wood dodges to his left and scores! Thomas Wood, a quick move and a quick shot. And North Carolina, has a one goal lead. And almost consider this goal a byproduct of the previous one when Holman drew the defensive player and found his open teammate. This time, Princeton's a little hesitant to slide when Thomas Wood gets his hands free. See, no one comes to him. That's why he's able to get the shot. So Princeton, it's one of those things. You win some, you lose some. You try to slide, they beat you for the open pass. You don't slide the man with the ball in a stick, finds the back of the cage. So three straight goals here for North Carolina. Four straight going back to the first quarter and a timeout called by Princeton. It's a 4-3 Tar Heel lead. It's an All-American Showcase at the Konica Minolta Faceoff Classic. First at 11, top-ranked Syracuse battles Big East foe Georgetown. Then at 1.30, Cornell and Virginia tangle. The Konica Minolta Faceoff Classic, tomorrow at 11 a.m. on ESPNU.
Seasons may change, but my game will stay the same. Introducing the Surgeon STS, featuring all climate performance technology. North Carolina has scored four straight goals, and they've got a 4-3 lead at Princeton, 6.31 to go in the second quarter. And ESPNU's College Lacrosse Weekend just getting started here tonight. Tomorrow, we've got a really good doubleheader at the Conica Minolta Faceoff Classic. First at 11, it's Syracuse, the number one team in the country, taking on Big East rival Georgetown. Then at 1.30, it'll be the ninth-ranked Cornell Big Red, taking on my partner's alma mater, number two, Virginia. All that at the Conica Minolta Faceoff Classic on ESPNU tomorrow. And there you see the Conica Minolta Faceoff Classic in Baltimore has really become a, a staple of the college lacrosse schedule. Eight of the last nine NCAA champions have played in that tournament. And those are playing tomorrow. And number one, Syracuse, number two, Virginia last year, a 12-10 game. Meanwhile, Georgetown tomorrow trying to get their first win against Syracuse in quite a while. We saw Georgetown a couple of weeks ago at Maryland. They did not look good. And I, I would say uh, they're going to have to really raise their game significantly to have a good shot against Syracuse tomorrow in Baltimore. Meanwhile, Princeton taking a timeout as North Carolina has scored four straight goals in this game. Three of them in the first quarter and then one in the fourth. What has turned the tide here for North Carolina? Well, look, I think it's a, it's a product of a couple of things. North Carolina is winning the faceoffs. They capitalize on the man up opportunity and they're winning the ground balls and doing this, this, the small things. That's why that Ficaro face off right there was such a big thing to get Princeton a possession where they're going to spin the ball around, try to play their typical offense, and really look to attack the short stick. And this is a great opportunity for the freshman to get an alley dodge going down the wing. Meanwhile, Chris Madelon in goal for North Carolina has come up with a couple of saves after allowing three goals before making his first save. Now a bounce shot from Forrest Sonnenfeld bounces high. You see Princeton's performance by quarter this season. They've had 12 first quarter goals, only eight for the rest of the game combined. We're only talking about two games so far, two and a, and, and a, and a quarter for Princeton, but hot starts are not enough. And so far, uh, Princeton falling into a bit of a fast start and then fade pattern. Yeah, and that's something you, you got to remember to remind your players that it's it's a four-quarter game. Winning the first quarter is, is nice, but I'd rather win that last quarter and make the big plays at the big moments. A pass misses. Picked up behind the net, though. Princeton will hold on. Quickly passed out to midfield. And I'd like to see Princeton, I know they run this unique offense, but I'd like to see him set these picks, play the two-man game, but also do a lot more off-ball, find people cutting to the cage. Because when you get your hands free, you want to look inside to find the better shot for the inside players. Sonnenfeld works his way in, goes left side, save made by Madelon, and a whistle, crease violation. We'll give it back to the Tar Heels. So far as Sonnenfeld, he's had the ball in his stick a lot today, Matt. And He's a big man, 6'6", 250, far as Sonnenfeld. And he has to find his way inside. And a nifty shot there, but a good save by Madeline. He's re really using his size to get his hands free. He doesn't need a lot of room. But what he does is he barges into his defensive player, shrugs him off, and then gets that inside shot. I'm interested to see. He's carrying the ball a lot right now. At 6'5", 250, can he do that for four quarters? How well conditioned is he? And uh, it'll be interesting to see. And that'll be something to watch for the remainder of this game. You saw on the stat track, shots now starting to pile up in favor of North Carolina, 11 to six in this game. Keep in mind, this all after they fell behind three nothing in this game. A shot hits the pipe from Mark McNeil. A good looking shot there from McNeil right up the slot and it hit the left pipe. Actually, the crossbar up high, and he got the pipe squarely there on a really good looking shot. That's when you're the prince of defense. You, you look to your goal and say, Wait, you know your surroundings and know your cage. <laughs> that was a rifle. 
from Mark McNeil. Ball on the ground now. Picked up by McNeil. He turns and scores! Mark McNeil picks the ball off the ground and fires it past Fiorito. Five straight goals for North Carolina. Mark McNeil, the player, just fired one off the post. This is just a smart play and a hustle type play and a very alert uh, goal where he just picks up the ground ball. And right here you can see Campbell drops it. McNeil just comes in hard, gets this ground ball, and runs through the entire Princeton defense and buries it past Fiorito to the far lot of bottom corner. Well, we're talking about all these freshmen today. We talk about the two stars, but Mark McNeil, don't forget about him. Second goal of the game for the freshman from West River, Maryland. And he says, don't forget about me, guys. Impressive sequence there from McNeil. Now a quick face-off when right back comes North Carolina. And they are really starting to take this game over here on the road. A face-off win after five straight goals. And my, one of my keys to the game was make North Carolina midfielders beat you. That seems to be backfired for Princeton at this point. They're the ones doing the damage. They're controlling the, the attackmen. Bitter and, and Galasso aren't creating that much with the ball in their stick. But these young players are stepping up and making plays in the midfield. North Carolina team coming in playing well and they have really found a groove here against Princeton with five straight goals. Stall warning in effect here as we come up on the two minute mark to go in the first half. And what's happening here is Princeton has fallen into a zone defense. So they're playing an area, not a man. And North Carolina is content. They're winning the game, right? They're up 5-3 at this point. They're content to make Princeton have to get out of this zone and come play the ball carry. He's going to sit there, I think, until Princeton. He'll kill the half. Why not? At this point, if the game were to end, you get the last possession of the first half, things are going to be looking good for North Carolina. There you see Princeton just hanging out in that zone in North Carolina. You're right, Matt. They are uh, in absolutely no rush to do anything here. Princeton's down two goals. It's still early, but at this point, I love what North Carolina is doing. They realize they have a two-goal lead. They get the last possession of the first half. If they score here, they're up 6-3, and Princeton won't have an opportunity to get the ball back. I just wonder, from Princeton's perspective, do you want to lay back like this and, and, and give them a chance to get a three-goal lead now and six straight goals going into halftime? No, if I was Princeton, I'd keep playing defense. North Carolina's not beating them six on six. It's on the ground balls. It's on man up. It's on inverts behind. If I were them, I would just... Come out and keep playing defense. You got the best, some of the two of the best defensive players in the country. So I'd love to see them just play the way they were and then just do the little things a little bit better. Better. Well, it's rare you see a ball just held with no challenge like this for a long time. It was held for well over a minute and 30 seconds by Thomas Wood. All right, coming up at halftime. A look at that thrilling finish at the ACC tournament for North Carolina, coming back from 19 points down. And we'll also update you on everything else going on around the March Madness Conference tournaments going on in full throttle here this Friday night. 10 seconds to go, North Carolina now finally going to get to work here offensively after that long stall. Quickly sent around, Marcus Holman. Right side and a shot save made by Fiorito. Rebound loose in front, and that's the end of the first quarter. So North Carolina, five goals, five straight in the final 16-03 of this first half. And Joe Bresci's squad will go to the locker room with a 5-3 lead here in Princeton. And coming up on the Warrior Lacrosse Halftime Report, North Carolina on the hardwood down to the wire as they erase a 19-point hole against Miami and potentially a big return for Duke in the ACC tournament. We'll break it down coming up. Built tough, hot like a Ford, Hemi, muddy, bloody, and bruised up. My sports, everything, anything but ordinary. The crowd stand out, know each other by the number, feed off the energy. I'm sweating in the gym for weeks, the wind is whipping our reach. Body checks, I have you kissing my cleats. The man behind the mask is a mad rig. Letting off fuck ten shots for the hat trick.
USC cheerleading is highly competitive. I tore my ACL in April 2010. I also damaged my meniscus and had to have reconstructive surgery, and that was a huge life-changing experience. It made me appreciate the sport and appreciate the ability for me to bounce back, and it's awesome to be back. I know I should have health insurance, but on my budget, I just can't afford it. I need help. I design homes to protect people, but I can't afford health insurance to protect my own family. What can I do? It's time to call ICANN, a name you can trust. If you've had problems affording major medical insurance or have been turned down due to health issues, you do have a choice. ICANN offers you options including association group insurance programs and major medical plans to meet your family's needs and budget because nothing is more important than your health. No matter your income or your pre-existing condition, call ICANN right now. If you could save hundreds of dollars a month or thousands of dollars a year, this is a call you can't afford not to make. Tens of thousands have trusted ICANN with their family's health, and so should you. So don't wait. Call ICANN right now. When you call, ask your ICANN agent about programs that include access to doctors 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, from wherever you are. Don't wait. Call ICANN right now. We are almost there. Counting down to Selection Sunday, and once we get there, we will count you down to the start of the NCAA tournament with... ESPN Youth Tournament Countdown, 71 straight hours, brought to you by Delta Airlines. With that, welcome into the Warrior Lacrosse Halftime Report. Lowell Galindo here with the former head coach at Wake Forest, Dino Gaudio. And I know it was a special moment before the tip of North Carolina, Miami, in the ACC tournament because you had Tyler Zeller picking up the Skip Prosser Award. Skip was all about academics, and Tyler's an excellent representative of the award. It was a 19-point lead for Miami. Adrian Thomas fumbles it away, and essentially the Canes fumble away the lead. But for the first time, North Carolina takes the lead, and they do it for good because Tyler Zeller said he just had to sit there on this pass. Kendall Marshall's been a difference for this team since he's been running the point for Carolina. Fifth, one of the biggest comeback in the past five years for North Carolina. They advanced to take on Clemson, both those teams squarely in the NCAA tournament. Very interesting, though, before Duke and Maryland tipped, Kyrie Irving was warming up. I really believe that when doctors say that Kyrie could go, he'll be out there with his teammates. But that's a great sign for Blue Devil fans. Duke is up by seven. Kyrie Irving not dressed out for this game, but teasing us just a little bit. Patriot League Championship, it's Lafayette against Bucknell. Bucknell trying to get to the tournament for the first time since 2006. Mike Muscala helping them get there. They run away with this one, Coach. Yeah, Brian Johnson, and don't forget with the big shot, Bucknell in 2005, first round upset at Kansas. And then the next year they come out, they beat Arkansas as well as a nine seed. The Bucknell has had some decent seeding in past seasons, getting some of that notoriety. This is the only team that will go into the NCAA tournament on this day. It brings the number up to 14, but Saturday is going to be crazy. We're going to be here with lacrosse starting at 11 a.m., take you all the way through the night, as tomorrow alone, 13 tournament bids will be.